I heard of the Quran, yeah, yeah. Yeah. which tells you how to do with... Well, well I want us to friends. I want to show you 582. We will, we will. Yeah. 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 If, you, if you open up Surah number 60, Ayah uh, 8. Can you clip it? What would you say? Can't clip it. No, no, no. It's reliable. Would you say that the English translation of the Quran is reliable? Is reliable. Is reliable. Is reliable. Is reliable. There are many translations, even yes, in the English language. Yeah. Just if give me the footage. Well, but you upload it as normal. Well. If there's any issue where you think it's not right or it's not very clear, you get, then consult many translations because you only need to rely on translations. Upload this For us, we go to the Arabic and we go to the explanation. By the commentator. Keep it private. That's how ready. we go. Yeah, yeah. Right. But just give because me it's very the Definitely, I will. I was just thinking it doesn't work. You know, there's more than 20 but I don't know why. Available. What, what, what? Yeah, like the, you know, uh, if it's on the private, uh, and I'll know. send you a link, I'm thinking. Don't worry, I'm there, I'm there. So uh, different. Just send to me the name from my hotel. Which is not clear to you. Consult us many translations. I don't think that's in properly, but look on the side. Side, it might fall out. Oh, no, it's oh, 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 now. Yeah, yeah. Be careful, otherwise you'll just slip out you You're right, yeah. Respecting those who have not made war against you on account of your religion and have not driven you from, from your home. But you show them kindness and deal with them justly. She Allah loves those who does justice, yours of justice. Right. So, Which is a very beautiful verse, so, so, if I may say so. so when when nice. Allah talks about don't take protecting friends, yeah. but he tells us, but with everyone else, okay, those who are not confronting you, driving you away from your home, and so on, the rules of engagement, that's destruction, it, that's it. That's it. fairness, okay. and dealing just with Okay, so have a look at uh, 929. Go to 929. If you could on your phone, go to 929. In context of what? In war? Uh, well, it, it's, it's, you say it's war. The whole chapter is in the context of war. No, no, no. But it, so it speaks, I want, it speaks to the end of the scripture. Yeah. This is context. It, before I go into this, okay, okay. this is a chapter yes. in a context of war. So of course you'll find Ayat talking about warfare, how to engage okay. in warfare. Okay. But so what I want you to yeah. finish, because we have to go, 929 yeah. we have talked so many times, you find yeah. so many yeah. people okay. talking about okay. it. Right? We'll stick to these. We'll stick we want to these. know right. your okay. confusions okay. about how do you okay. think some of the verses somehow are uh, okay. not... So, let, so in, in light of the um, verses that we've looked at already, mm -hmm. right, we will go to uh, 582. Go to 582. Right, so... Um, Certainly you will find the most violent of people in enmity for those who believe to be the Jews and those who are polytheists. And you will certainly find the nearest in friendship to those who believe to be those who say we are Christians. This is because there are priests and monks among them because they do not behave proudly. Yeah. So that is a compliment. I, I see that as a, as a it's showing as the reality a, as a compliment. It's showing the reality of the people who believe. There are groups of people who will show enmity and hatred towards the Muslims. That is because among them are priests and monks and because they are not arrogant. So that is almost like a partial compliment. So it describes a group of Christians who say we are Christians and they behave in a way because there are, among them there are priests and among them there are monks and they're not so proud so of course you'll find them closer in love towards you so in, in a way in a way that is that is saying that there's people amongst the christians and jews who who um, what can be trusted is no, that it's nothing about trust this simply talks about in terms of how people behave towards you, there are a group of people who will always have enmity, strong enemy towards you, and identifies those who call themselves Jews. Isn't it obvious in the last how many centuries this is how they are showing the enmity? Common trait. Yeah? I'm not making a generalization, this is the reality. But from among the Christians, those who are monks and priests and they don't boast about who they are, they're humble people, they are close to us in love and affection. affection. Look, recently, Pope so does talked this, about, I don't want to yeah, okay, contextualize yeah, yeah. in today's time. Yeah. 
Didn't recently Pope talk about how Islam is not a violent religion? Sure. No, we, we, don't follow, and, and, we don't follow the Pope no, no, and we reject no, I'm Islam. saying the Quran talked about among the, yeah, among the yeah, Christians yeah, yeah. who are priests and monks. He's one of them. He's a humble person. That would include, include Catholics. Well, are you saying the Quran only talks about Christians? Protestantism only arose in the Middle Ages, my friend. Yeah, okay. Before that, who were they? Yeah, okay, okay. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about those who call themselves Christians. Yeah. Okay. So in this eye, it's not showing favoritism, it's not showing anything like you describe, it's just describing the reality of attitudes and behavior between Muslims, Jews and Christians. Or Jews towards Muslims and Christians towards Christians. Okay. Between them. Okay. So this, this is quite a favorable verse towards the Jews and the Christians, would you agree? It's quite nothing to do with favourable verses. It's true. You see, the whole, you're concocting an argument. Oh, there are favourable verses and there are non-favourable verses. I am saying no, the Quran lays down the reality. The reality is this. This is how the Jewish and the Christian attitudes and behaviour to the Muslims are. Sometimes in an warfare, sometimes in not in a warfare. And this is what your relationship should be. But Quran also talks about, in general, how you should behave with the people who are not in war with you, as I explained to you earlier on. So nothing about favoring someone sometimes and later on not favoring. This is a... How long are you going to be? Not very long. What, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Yeah. This, is, this is an attitude of study that is happening in um, Orientalism and some Jewish Christian circle, perhaps, is just to show somehow the Prophet was initially, you know, a very humble, peace loving person, and later on, when he got power and in the state of Medina, when he became a statesman, he became very violent. No such thing. Because the message of the Quran is throughout consistent. Consistent. But when Muhammad left Mecca, um, so now I, I want to, I want you to finish this first. No, no, just, talk let, about I'll just say that point and, and, and moves to uh, Medina. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. We we see him gathering an army to uh, fight against his enemies. Eventually, which he returns to Mecca to um, basically conquer it. What did he do with these people, the Meccans, when he came to conquer them? The same Meccans who tortured him, his family, Wasn't he born his there? companions. Of course, he was born there. Uh -huh. The Prophet Muhammad, I'm not sure this is a different question you're talking They were persecuted. Their wealth confiscated. That's right. They were tortured, oppressed, murdered. And then yeah. they were driven away from their homes. So when he returned, what did he show as a response to those Meccans who did this to him? Prophet of mercy. Did he give them a choice of um, convert to Islam or just continue as you are? Prophet of mercy. So you haven't read what no, happened? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. I'm just telling you. A tree was not allowed to... You haven't heard because about it. We, we do. You do not know about the conquest of Mecca and what the Prophet did. Well, I have some limited knowledge yes. about it. So when he came, it was like a general forgiveness to everyone. Amnesty. Yeah. Amnesty. A tree was not allowed right? to be cut. This is how his response was. The same people. Because don't forget, what? there still would have been lots of pagans in Mecca at that time. Yes. Yes. And he said what? So now, why, why did they decide that they want to become Muslims? No, later on they did. They, you know? even those later days, they, they entered into Islam in folds, yes. in ranks. Why? Because the Prophet gave them this general amnesty. Yeah. Amnesty, so how you say it. Forgiveness to all. So he didn't persecute them, except a few individuals. But in general, everyone was forgiven. The people who ate the liver of his uncle, the people who you know oppressed and killed and tortured and maimed, and did so much horrible things throughout that time. And when he returned, he showed them mercy. He showed them compassion. He says, okay, you are forgiven. They were moved by his forgiveness. And they entered into Islam willingly. So many of them. How many people in Mecca became Muslims when Muhammad returned? Many, I don't know the number exactly myself. Are we talking thousands? I, 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 I think it's a large number of people became Muslims. Large number. Okay. Next time when I go, Do I can dig up the exact numbers okay. from the books of Sirah. 
but prophetic biography, I can tell you, if I have time, I could have picked it up now. Come over here. Time, as you know. So, so as you realize, this is how the response was. So now, if we go back in 582, as you, we have read here, yeah. yeah. it describes the people's attitude towards Muslims. Said. Now, why do you find this problematic? Okay, so there's one more verse that I wanted to look at, and um, that is. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 572. Just a few verses earlier. Few, uh, earlier. Yeah, very, very, very close. I think I'm going to record this. Okay, so the look now at 572. Okay, they have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary. While the Messiah has said, O children of Israel, worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. Indeed, he who associates others with Allah, Allah has forbidden in him paradise and his refuge is the fire and there are not for the wrongdoers any helpers so what I'm, my contention is that completely contradicts 262 how does it contradict 262 please elaborate right. I've explained to you 262 with enough time explaining so how does this contradict in any way shape or form Surat al-Baqarah ayah number 62 <coughs> It hasn't given any reference to the earlier verses. So how does it contradict yeah, that? Light, yeah, the light um, path in your thinking. It's saying that Christian um, Christians, and I, I'm not sure if it mentions Jews, but certainly Christians are um, wrongdoers. So it, it, what I, my contention is that goes against 262. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a contradiction there. That's what my contention is. Which, which, which ayah we were talking about here? Which verse? Uh, did you say two, uh, 572. Was it? 72. Check it one more time. Uh, 572. Okay. Yeah. They have certainly these people who say Allah is the Messiah, the Son of God. While the Messiah has said, all children of Israel worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Indeed, he who associates others with Allah, Allah has forbidden him paradise and his refuge is the fire. And there are no one who is not for them, nor do us any help. Clearly saying, if you take Jesus Christ as Allah as God, or Allah is Jesus Christ, if you take that belief, but what about the you have certainly what about the prophet Isa? What about the prophet Isa? Yeah, let him finish. I'm sure if, that's a wrong if, statement. If just anyone like, makes a statement or believes in that belief that Allah is the Messiah or Messiah is God, Messiah is Allah, then they have certainly disbelieved. So they haven't believed in Allah. They believe in Allah is no boy. And the Quran clarifies the belief you have about the Messiah that is God. When the Messiah actually came, he said something totally different to what the people believe. He said, Oh people, oh children of Israel, believe and worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. So people should have worshipped Allah, the Lord of Jesus Christ, and Lord of the children of Israel. Whoever associates a partner with Allah saying, oh, Jesus is also God, or anyone else is also God, then paradise is forbidden. Hellfire is the only destination. And these people who believe in this, they are called wrongdoers, and they will have no helper to bring them out from hellfire. This ayah is exactly complementing the ayah earlier on. If you had that belief as a Christian, but then you believed in Allah, even though you were a Christian, you believed in Allah that no, Allah is not Jesus and Jesus is not Allah and he's not a trinity and all the wrong beliefs that you and you disregard and, and put away all this wrong belief, then you will have the reward. But if you persist on believing that Allah is the Messiah or Allah has taken a son and all these things to Quran says don't believe, then hellfire is the only destination.
Okay, so I must continue to the point that the Quran points Muslims in the direction of the Torah and the Injil and, and says that... doesn't. No, but the verses that we've looked at seem to contradict that the, the Quran points towards the Torah and the Injil for Muslims uh, to refer to those books. No, not at all. What we have seen so because far... Because then what is the Injil? Well, what what is the we have, Injil? We have, the word Injil is not even mentioned in this two ayat that you talked about. Yeah. The ayah, the verses that you brought forward, talks about the attitude of the Jewish Christians to Muslims. And in this ayah, in ayah 72, Allah talks about the state of consequence of the people who believe that Allah is Jesus or Jesus is Allah. So. When it comes to contradiction, but that verse clearly says, Mansur, that the Christians will be in the hellfire. So why is it pointing? What did he say? Christians will be hellfire. Uh, in, it says, in the last whoever believes, those, those. it says, those of the people who believe that Messiah is Allah. So why would the Quran point towards the Torah and okay. the Injil? If you believe the Messiah is Allah, according to the Quran, you'll be in hellfire. Anyone who believes the Messiah is God, they will be in hellfire. So they will be the in hellfire. In jail. This is not talking about the Injil. So what we have done clarified is this. They're not actually allowed to question us. Excuse me. You came along to say I have some verses which you think somehow they don't match up with each other, they contradict. We have gone through these examples and we have established Without a no, but are you denying no, that let's the finish my Quran point. points to the have, Torah and the Injil? Um, I will answer that question. Okay. 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 What we have established from the pair of verses or ayat that you have brought, none of them are contradictory. That's what we have established. Your next question seems to well, be nothing about contradiction, well, but does the Quran somehow point if towards... If the followers of the Injil. Injil are bound for hellfire, why does the Quran point towards the Torah and the Injil? That, that, that's contradictory. The followers of Injil are not in hellfire. Those people who followed the Injil, those people, those people who followed the Torah, they will be what? Successful ones. But if they associated a partner with Allah, then hellfire is forbidden. They will be forbidden from paradise. So if you think you are a follower of Injil, which you don't have in your hands, unfortunately, or your misfortune, well, we believe we do have it. Because Allah's words okay. can be corrupted, apparently. One second, one second. We, we believe we do have it. Jesus Christ preached the Injil. So God's words right? can get corrupted. Excuse me. Jesus Christ so I mean. preached the Injil. Do you know what? Which? Who says that? One of the Gospels, a few of the Gospels. Where does it say in the Quran that the Injil has been corrupted? Okay, listen. It doesn't say it. No, first of all, you made a statement. It say it. <laughs> you made a statement it that She's kind you, of have, you had the Injil, right? Your Gospels says Jesus preached the Injil. So I want to know from your Gospel, where is the Injil that the Gospel talk about? That we believe we have it. No, no. The Gospels say Jesus preached the Injil. Yes, and the disciples if wrote you, it down. So where is the Injil Jesus preached? Okay. We've got it by the, by the disciples. No, Chris, no, Chris, Chris, Chris. The Gospels Chris. refers to no, it's something like you're, Jesus it's like what, you're, what you're talking, let's just say you're talking now. Every bit of word you two have been saying, I write it down. Every single word. And Did every, all the Injil got written down? Not all of it, no. So you haven't got all the Injil. First point. No, Second. because it says, because it says, Excuse because me? Jesus says, if God, if, if if we were to write down every bit of God's word, it would no. flood the whole earth. Was all of the Injil written down? No. That gospel? Yes. No, not gospel. Injil. What the gospels writers refer to? They say Jesus went along and preached the Injil. So was that Injil which the gospel writers are referring? To all of Putin down. Yeah. And by who? By the disciples. Which one? <laughs> Which one? What does Injil translate to? What's the translation of Injil? Good news. Good news. So, which disciple got all of the Injil? Got written down. Which, my friend, which disciple wrote down all of the Injil? <laughs> Matthew, Mark, and John. No, which one gospel writer wrote down all of them? Are you saying collectively? Uh, as far as I'm 
where um, I, I know Matthew. Huh? They are talking about Ninja. They're not writing Ninja. They're talking about it. Um, as John, I'm pretty sure, certainly wrote, wrote down the book of John. Okay. I'm um, not talking about the book of John. I'm talking about. And Matthew, I think. You see, this huh? gospel writer said they're talking about Jesus. And Jesus no went way. along and preached the gospel, the Injil. So obviously, Matthew, Mark, or Luke, they are saying Jesus preached the Injil. So where is the Injil? It's not Matthew, Mark, and Luke, because they are referring to that Jesus preached that. Where is it? We have the Injil. Where is it? The New Testament. That is the Injil. It's written no. down. So, so, it's the address to M, you know? So you yeah, think... The address? You think... <laughs> the Bible dot com. <laughs> you think Fantor. the New Testament is what Jesus preached? Yeah, yeah. So whatever Paul said, this is what Jesus preached. Uh, Ma certainly Matthew and Excuse John. Me. Whatever who, who Paul... Would, uh, who were disciples. Wrote, whatever Paul wrote, this is what Jesus preached, every single letter, word, sentence. Uh, whether Paul quoted some words I'm of Jesus. I'm not saying quoting, you said the New no, Testament. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Well, when Paul wrote, Paul was getting revelations from Jesus. This guy is crazy. But was he preaching, uh, documenting the Injil, which Jesus preached in his three year ministry? Yes. He mentioned the scriptures. So, Paul wrote what Jesus preached. Yes. I can't. Yeah. So Jesus within his three years of ministry, he fought, Paul wrote it. Well, not the exact same thing, but he obviously. Then you have Injil. No, no, no. We're what, interested what in the Injil, not yeah, the in translation of it. When I say no, when I say when I say it is, it is, but not in obviously in his own way. It's like, for example, if Jesus comes to me and, stop, and, 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 and gives me the good news, but I can reveal it in my own way. But Jesus, that's what you know what I mean. So you are basically giving me a translated, interpreted, interpreted, um, interpreted account of what the Injil is. Forget so you haven't got the Injil. What you have is, is an explanation look at, look and a commentary Luke, and a biography of Jesus rather than the Injil. Because there's loads of stuff what Jesus We believe said. the Injil uh, most likely would be Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. What about forget the Gospel Paul, of St. Thomas? Was that in jail? Uh, what about the Gospel of Nazareth? Yes, yes, okay, what about the Gospel of Nazareth? What about the Gospel of the Immunites? Oh, hold on, what about the Gospel of Mary? I'll answer that. I'll answer that. The Gospel of the, of the Nazareth. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be really honest though. Yeah? It has the exact same thing as it is in our Gospel, but it's got additions. In. For example, uh, uh, it's got Jesus's, it's got, it's got, it's got, it's got everything that basically that the, the Gospel of the Nazarene has. No, sorry, everything that we have in our Gospel, the Gospel of the Nazarene has. But this one, the Gospel of the Nazarene, has his life between the ages of like 11 to 18 as well. So, so is this also documenting the Injil that Jesus preached? What, the Gospel of the Nazarene? Yes. Yes. It's not in your Bible. Yeah, it is. It is. I've read the Gospel of the Nazarene. It's not in your canonized Bible, is it? Oh no, the gospel. No, no. Exactly. It's the same. But I'm saying it's the same. So thing. now you have the Injil lost no. in canonization. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. I've got it online. It's online. No, no, no. I said the Injil lost in canonization. Oh, okay. Alright. Alright, even the Gospel of Thomas. That was actually. So basically now the Gospel of Thomas is actually. The Gospel of Thomas. It was actually. They're saying that it could actually possibly very likely be the first gospel written. The Gospel of Thomas possibly in 40 AD. Okay, but let's, let's stick with Matthew, yeah. Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. So but you can get that online. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, no. So, which Injil is the Quran referring to? Which one? But the Gospel of Thomas says a lot about this. Remember, remember, it's the same thing. There are more than 49 Gospels that we know of are around. Certainly, Matthew and John. Certainly. I want to make one point. One Allah. There are more than 49 Gospels that are mentioned throughout the extant works. Yeah. And they all more or less write one. Yeah. The Quran doesn't refer to any single one of them. So which Injil is the Quran referring to? The good news that Jesus preached. But you don't know which one? Matthew. It all comes into one. So, no. so you are saying it all, they're it all spread out all in everywhere. I'm all this I'm saying, and John. No, I'm saying. But he's saying St. Thomas. No. The Gospel of Thomas. Okay, that's just I'm saying that they're. Yes. Or not. 
Uh, it is relevant. Yeah, Chris, so when the Quran says, when the Quran says about yeah. the Injil, people of the Injil, which Injil is he referring to? Well, He's not referring to your gospel, is it? Certainly, certainly Matthew and John. Certainly, certainly not. No, you know why? Because the Quran has a name in your authors. So you cannot pinpoint it refers to Matthew and But the gospel is like the good news. So that would be the Injil. That would be the gospel. So it's the gospel of Matthew and sometimes it's that the uh, is Sahara. not they the, uh, the Injil, or it's been corrupted. None of your the Quran doesn't say it's been corrupted. Yeah. Yeah. corrupted. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got a problem. Okay. Okay. You've got a problem. The Quran says that Allah revealed within and describe the Prophet Isa Islam Jesus. He even mentioned that after me there will be someone to come who will be called. Um, so I can find that in your gospel. The reason we have this can I find it in your gospel? Well, the reason we have this problem is really due to the crucifixion and the resurrection, which Muslims don't accept, so therefore they're not going to accept the... I don't understand your relevance to bringing this to the gospel. The gospels cannot therefore be accepted as the Injil because there's a major contradiction. You, 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 you said, where does the Quran somehow indicate okay. that Gospels are corrupted? I said, if the Gospels are intact, meaning all that the Gospels, Jesus preached in his Gospel, you would find, as the Quran said, that he said, after me, there will be someone who will come with name is out. I should be able to find that in the Gospel, which you think is uncorrupted. Right? Well, there's supposed to be a prophecy about Muhammad in the Bible, but no Christian can find it. You, again, you, you, you're, you're totally them, not I mean, understanding my point. I thought that's the what Quran, you meant. The Quran, about no, the Quran, the Bible. Me, everything Jesus the Quran says did part of the message that was given in the Injil to Jesus Christ is this: that, that He tells that after me there will be someone who will come. So so his name is going to be Ahmed. One of the names of Muhammad, right? So this is in the where is this? Where is this? In the Quran. In the Quran. Yeah, that, that's right. yeah, in that's the right. Quran, it says that the says, name of Muhammad will be found what, in the Bible. Yeah, this yeah. is what the one of the message, one of the message of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. right? They're, they're, Which was in his Injil that was given to. Right. If you believe the Injil is not corrupted, that means we should find the name of Ahmed so in the uncorrupted gospel that you think you have. So so where is it? In your uncorrupted gospel. Good question. And if you ever find it, if you ever find it, then so you haven't found it. Then Christians would have a major, major problem. You haven't found it. We only preached for three years. If you haven't found it, because we believe we've already got it, and that is that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mainly, have you found mainly. the name Ahmed mentioned by Jesus or Jesus? Have you ever found in the Quran where it says? that the Injil is, has been corrupted. I am giving you an implicit reference of corruption. If it wasn't corrupted, then in an uncorrupted gospel, we will find the mention of Ahmed in there. The fact that you cannot find the name Ahmed means that it has been corrupted. Well, that, that's your interpretation. It's not my interpretation. This is what you would say. What we would say is that is a 
major. No, no, Jurash, wait, wait, wait. It's coming to me. You? No, no, no. I'm just saying it's been a great, great discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice talking to you. Take care. You know, and, and one thing, by the way. I hope we can talk again. We can talk again. As long as you know, you I'm sincere that, is, yeah. that I want people to see the gates of heaven, not the gates of hell. Okay. Do you as agree? a Christian, Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? God alone, as described in the Bible. <laughs> but worship okay. God alone is important, right? That like the verse as, as described in the Bible. <laughs> that should be our yeah. common ground. Worship him alone. You know, Without worshiping anyone else. But I, that I, is where we should discuss yeah. any discussion. But I, I implore all Muslims to pray to God and say, was he son or was he prophet? God has answered that question already. And he says, in fact, the heavens and the earth is about to shatter asunder, split, get destroyed. That people ascribe a son 